this year compared to college rules if you guys are just going to automatically adopt the new rules and not where there's not going to be any whistles here on the side no we still have whistles you still have them so this is really good because you do that so take your short stick mini who's in the game and put them over here opposite the back the uh, opposite the box so whatever side you're clearing from so a short stick mini down here I suggest it be somebody who runs pretty well and has got pretty good uh, stick skills. Maybe your best mini. Keep your one of your better handling defensemen on, your goalie. Put your best handling long pole, your best defensive player with a long pole here in the middle. Keep this side completely open, this whole alley here. You want nobody over here. You're clearing mini here and clear your other two middies all the way down to the restraining area of the offensive end. Okay, what is going to happen, they're going to, they only have six people there, or people, they're going to have to recognize this right away and throw two people here guarding these guys. You know, and so that takes two people out of the thing. What's going to happen usually is that an attackman is going to play this kid so that he can either run by him or he can just throw the ball to the goalie, run up here, step over, and the goalie can just throw him back the ball. He's going to be open because the attackman can't go with him. And the other thing that I saw happen was that if they take this uh, attackman who's back here and he sees this kid coming up, he'll move over here. Then you can throw the ball to this defense and you tell him you just throw the ball to the kid who's over. You can run this against any kind of ride that you'll see and figure it out for yourself. But this is the setup. And the key is to clear out these two midfielders. Get them downfield. Because that means that they got to honor that. Now, if they're stupid enough to say, okay, we'll ride him with a mini, and we're not going to play one of these two guys, we'll play a pole here in the middle, then these guys just break up. And you're going to have one or the other for a long pass open. There's, there's no way they can play. So as long as you have the basic setup, I think you can fool around with it in your practices, but you're going to find this alley is wonderful for this kid. First of all, there's very few attackmen who ride with the dam, and uh, so he can beat him most of the time. And second of all, if he doesn't have the ball, he just comes up and clears over, and there he is. And, and there's nobody left to play him. They're going to have to take the pole and come play him or the guy off. <coughs> and if they want to come over here and worry about him, then he's probably going to open up to be a free guy. Any questions? I mean, it's just a basic formation, a basic set, and you guys run it and, and try it, and I think you'll find that it's, it's terrific, no matter what they do. Coach? Yes? Why did you um, designate that side of the field? Why did you... Um... Just try to stay away from the box, because I'd much rather clear the ball up here. I don't want to... Because you're probably going to run this kid off, and now with the... Uh, or, and you, they run a defenseman on here, and you're clearing this side with this guy. I just see too many people get killed from the box there. Yeah, my, my basic suggestion to you, no matter what clear, even as, especially on the uh, unsettled clear, so a goalie makes a save or whatever, you're always looking to the non-box side to clear the ball. Uh, the other suggestion I have you, do you, guys, uh, you play two short stick midi defensemen and one pole. Uh, I think, you know, I would keep one short stick midi defenseman uh, back in here on a goalie save. I wouldn't just have them break out. Break the pole out toward the box and break your other guy out here and keep one guy down uh, just as a safety measure for these guys clearing the ball. But if it's a, if it's a whistle and you got a settle clear, I, I just don't know how you ride this. And if you find somebody who can ride it, I would love to know that ride. <laughs> so let me know. Does it change with the fast whistles? I, we coach in Texas, so we're under the new rules. new rules. So do you think it's going to change for us having a quick restart? Should we be, should we plan on pulling middies off the field immediately beforehand, or should we keep them on the I field? Think, and, you take your best short stick midi uh, defensive guy who's okay. the best guy with the ball and tell him every time you're going right to that corner. Just pick the ball or up and go? Pick the ball up and look to go. You can throw it, and we'll get the other people set up as we sub here. We'll bring two middies down. So is it a good idea to pull those middies off it, through the sub before we yeah, even transition the ball? Anyway, as far as I know, okay. most offensive middies are getting the hell out of the game as fast as they can to go defense or the defensive guys are running off. So I it's, keep the best guys down and put the other guy down. We played one game a week ago and we only had the ability to put five midfielders on the field the entire game.
because of that. Yep. It, it speeds it up. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, and of course, that's how we play all the time with the, uh, in the NLL, or MLL. Any other questions about this? Okay. Uh, I thought I'd have John Cohen come up. He's my assistant general manager. He's also a very, very successful high school coach here in the area. And talk to you a little bit about how do you get the kid seen from Colorado? What do you do with the young kid who you think is going to be a star? And how do we get the coaches to see him? Uh, what's the story with all the club teams and, and all those kind of ways? There's so many ways now uh, for your kids to get seen and uh, get recruited by college coaches. And I think college coaches probably, I think Petra Mollo and Bresci from Carolina, they probably got uh, birth records on some of these kids that are, are five or six years old. They're recruiting them so young. I see more and more of these kids that are committing now when they're in uh, freshman in high school. Thank God I'm not coaching anymore in college because I, I just don't know how you can see if a 15-year-old kid, what he's going to be like when he's 18. I've seen too many kids in their junior year of high school all of a sudden get some hair on their uh, testicles and become men and uh, have some puberty and all of a sudden they're big and they're not like the Italian kid who was big in ninth grade and they start dominating and then they got nowhere to go to school now because everybody's recruited and, and used up. So uh, it's just an amazing world right now in the recruiting and the college coaches have all the players. We have so many players in the country that are playing across so many high schools in so many areas that it's supply and demand. It's, it's the coach's world. You know, they can pick out and they can do what they want to do. Uh, so how do you get that kid seen? John? So, in, and I kind of want to go beyond just high school since we do have a lot of youth coaches in here too, is, is kind of the club format in general. Um, obviously, you know, it seems like they got like U7 tournaments now, you know, and eventually there's going to be U5 tournaments and stuff like that. As a, as a high school coach, I mean, I my thing was I never wanted the kids to get burned out. So, I mean, and that's some, especially early on, you have to think if kids are playing U7 or U9 even, and they're playing in the fall, and then they play for the club team in the summer, and then they play for the regular team in the spring. Um, I'm all for, you know, obviously having the best teams and the best kids possible, but you kind of have to gauge too, especially if you're a father, just, you know, where's my kid at? You know, if he's playing U9, he's playing year round. In nine years, 10 years, is he gonna wanna go to college and spend, you know, 50 hours a week playing? Um, so that's kind of one one thing I've, I've seen that kind of kind of kind of scares me a little bit the other thing Tony kind of touched on was not only the kids that aren't seen because 2016s are getting recruited but what happens to a kid that commits as a freshman in high school what motivation does he have you know to play well to train if he's got you know if he's got his verbal to Hopkins as you know an eighth grader you know that kid's probably not going to be in the wall in ninth grade 10th grade 11th grade. Um, so even, you know, as, as a club coach, as an elite coach, we kind of look for those uncommitted seniors. Those are kind of the diamonds in the rough. And as a high school coach, I guess the question is, is how do you, how do you get a kid seen? So if you know you have, you know, a junior that's, you know, maybe not on the Arapahoes, the Cherry Creeks, the, you know,